Welcome to the Fighterverse. Today, we're diving deep into the death battle episode that pitted Akuma against Shao Kahn. While we absolutely love their content, we've got some serious bones to pick with this particular showdown. Was it really a one-sided battle? Or can Shao Kahn actually beat Akuma? Hold on to your seats because we're about to break it all down in the most thrilling way possible. Without further ado, let me welcome you to the Fighterverse. Let's start today's episode with Akuma's feats in Asura's Wrath. Akuma's real strength is really displayed in this game, to his masterful evolution of his Oni form, to the fact that he split a moon in half, one thing that often gets overlooked is just how amazing Akuma's abilities are in this installment. He once fought Asura at full power for a mind-boggling 500 years, and there was no clear winner. Asura, from Asura's Wrath, is a big deal because he defeated Chakravartan a being who basically represented everything in his entire universe, life, death, and some profound cosmic stuff. This puts Asura on a whole different level, even above characters like Zen O and Beerus from Dragon Ball. But here's where it gets interesting. Akuma, especially when he's in his Oni form, is on par with Asura. What's more, while Asura is at his peak, Akuma keeps on getting stronger. This means that someday, he could even outshine someone as powerful as Asura. So, if we imagine a fight between Akuma and Shao Kahn, it's clear that Akuma has the upper hand. Shao Kahn might be able to conquer dimensions, but Akuma's power goes beyond that. He's more powerful than a god of gods in an entire multiverse. This makes the difference in power between Akuma and Shao Kahn pretty overwhelming. It's important to consider that both of these impressive feats involving Akuma and Asura occur within games developed by Capcom. This significant detail means that these feats should be taken into account when assessing Akuma's abilities, as they are not from unrelated sources. Moreover, these feats played a crucial role in further developing Akuma as a character. The influence of the battle with Asura is notably reflected in his design in Street Fighter V. In this version of Akuma, you can observe distinct changes, such as longer hair and a slightly older appearance. This evolution in Akuma's appearance and character serves as a testament to the significance of the battle with Asura in shaping his identity and abilities. In essence, these feats are not mere side stories or non-canon events, they are integral to Akuma's character arc and should be considered when evaluating his power and capabilities. In Tekken 7, one of the key points to consider when discussing the Akuma vs Shao Kahn matchup is Akuma's speed. If we look at his appearance in Tekken 7, and let's assume it's canon, which seems reasonable given the significance of surviving the raging demon move, then Akuma shows some incredible speed. For instance, Akuma managed to land his raging demon on Heihachi Mishima, although it didn't finish Heihachi due to plot reasons and surprise attack. Now, Heihachi is known to react at a pace of at least 4.09% the speed of light, as per the death battle episode against Geese Howard. This is based on scaling from an inferior Jack model. Both Heihachi and Akuma easily outmaneuvered Jack 7s, which are no slouches in terms of speed. To put it simply, Akuma's speed capabilities far surpass those of Shao Kahn. What's even more fascinating is that Akuma didn't even need to transform into his Shin Akuma or Oni forms for this feat, so the gap in speed and power between Akuma and Shao Kahn could be even more significant. In Capcom vs SNK2, even in the face of death on the battlefield, Akuma's connection to the Satsui no Hado is so profound that it grants him a remarkable resurrection, imbuing him with newfound strength and vitality, as exemplified in the ending of CVS2. In Ruggles' ending, he openly revels in his enjoyment of the Satsui no Hado, and with disdain, proclaims Akuma as unworthy of its power. Determining that this dark force requires a new and more deserving host, Rugal takes the audacious step of terminating Akuma and absorbing his Satsui no Hado, thereby transforming into the formidable entity known as Ultimate Rugal. However, this power move proves to be Rugal's undoing, as Akuma's indomitable will seizes control of Rugal's body, overpowering his fragile mind. In the aftermath of Rugal's defeat, Akuma emerges, declaring himself nameless and an entity of both nothing and everything, shrouded in the enigmatic depths of his connection to the Satsui no Hado. One thing I find interesting in the video is the little importance they give to Akuma's most vicious attack, 
which is the Shun Goku Satsu. When executed, the practitioner of the Satsui no Hado willingly surrenders themselves entirely to their murderous intent, unleashing a rapid and lethal barrage of strikes within a mere moment. Throughout its history, those who have employed this technique found themselves unable to resist the overwhelming influence of the Satsui no Hado, often succumbing to its corrupting power. While the executed attack is an unrelenting onslaught of merciless fury, the foundation of this technique is believed to be deeply intertwined with karmic forces, drawing from the dark influence of the Satsui no Hado. It channels an infernal form of retribution, where the cumulative weight of the sins and malevolence accumulated by the victim acts as a punishing force, assaulting their very soul. Shao Kahn would easily be defeated by this power due to how evil this guy is. Before dismissing the possibility of evading the attack, it's crucial to bear in mind one of Shao Kahn's most glaring weaknesses, his penchant for underestimating his adversaries. Shao Kahn's character is marked by an overbearing arrogance, unwavering cockiness, and a pronounced egocentrism. This perilous combination of traits makes him prone to complacency in life or death situations. Here are a couple more issues with the video's analysis that should be noted. Get ready because there are a couple of them. 1. Sentron's beam is typically employed as a finishing move on already defeated adversaries, making it a fatality rather than a combat ability used in an actual fight. 2. Shao Kahn's unique resistance to the Elder God's powers, as seen in Mortal Kombat 9, is a specific scenario. Under normal circumstances, he is notably susceptible to the Elder Gods, which is a stark contrast to his typical character portrayal. 3. The merging of realms and the use of the Solnado are portrayed as ceremonial rituals rather than inherent abilities or powers that Shao Kahn possesses, as indicated in the Mortal Kombat lore. 4. In the Mortal Kombat series, Liu Kang has defeated Shao Kahn on at least two occasions, despite being regarded as a character of inferior capabilities compared to Akuma. 5. It's highly improbable that Shao Kahn could cut off Akuma's hand or counter a raging demon due to a lack of such demonstrated abilities in his in-game character attributes. In general, it's worth noting that the analysis appears to lean more on Shao Kahn's storyline elements rather than the in-game characteristics. This contrasts with the approach taken for Akuma, who is shown to have formidable in-game feats such as sinking islands, destroying mountains, and countering meteorites. These feats suggest that Akuma possesses the power to severely incapacitate or defeat his rivals, further challenging the outcome of the battle. Moreover, it's crucial to mention that Shao Kahn's portrayal in Mortal Kombat 11 was notably weakened, to the point where he suffered defeat at the hands of Katana. This uncharacteristic vulnerability further undermines the video's assertion of Shao Kahn's superiority in a battle against Akuma. Another critical detail that should be considered is the significance of the hole in Shao Kahn's chest. In Mortal Kombat 9, Shao Kahn was incapacitated and needed recovery time following a similar injury, and if not for Quan Chi's intervention, he would have remained incapacitated. It's quite bewildering to conclude the video with a flawless victory statement, especially considering the evident biases in the analysis. If this doesn't exemplify bias, it's difficult to fathom what would. Folks, these are just a few of the attributes that might tip the scales in a battle. We're all entitled to our opinions, and we want to hear yours so drop your thoughts in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed this discussion, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more exciting theories and insights. Thanks for joining us on this journey, and I've been your host, welcoming you to the center stage.